All right, everyone, so today's our first day of our second social media class. And so we're going to um, talk about our first network, which is LinkedIn. Before we get to LinkedIn, I want to mention a website that will be useful to you. So you want to open your web browser. Go to your web browser, anyone you'd like. We've got them all installed. Open your web browser, and then we'll go to the address socialmediaexaminer.com There are plenty of websites out there that are current and relevant on just about every topic, of course, and here's one on social media. Uh, this website has been around for several years and is constantly updated. It's a blog. It's a website with new content very often, probably something new every day to look at. It's got a staff of, of writers that write about social media because this stuff is always changing. Uh, for example, last month we talked about Twitter, and in between the time that we talked about Twitter and this month, Twitter has changed a few things. Twitter has added the ability to uh, has, has removed the limit of your direct messages. It used to be that if you direct messaged a person on Twitter, it was limited to 140 characters, just like a regular tweet. But Twitter has now changed it so that you can write up to 10,000 characters when you direct message. Not on a regular tweet, that's still 140 characters. But when you chat with friends and family on Twitter, now you can chat up to 10,000 words per message. You would learn this stuff in a variety of places, and one of them would be here, socialmediaexaminer.com. And so Social Media Examiner, they are going to try to sell you something, like most websites, and they are going to give here also a free Social Media Marketing Industry Report. You just have to give your email. But if you skip all of that, you will see for example, five psychology tips to improve your social media posts. How to run an Instagram influencer campaign. We'll have to look at that because I haven't seen it. Uh, this was just added yesterday. So when we get to Instagram, we'll look at that. How to optimize landing pages to boost social media conversions. Well, maybe you understood the part of social media. What does conversions mean? What does landing page mean? What does optimize mean? Well, this kind of website is going to teach you all of that stuff, give, keep you up to date. And notice it's uh, pretty popular. This has got over 1,600 tweets on that one post. It's got social media shares. Five checks to ensure your Facebook page is up to date. It's got 2,400 shares. So this is a good website that I, that I recommend. Um, we'll talk about other ones as time goes on, but um, for example, here's one of the, the Twitter updates that they did. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about this one. Uh, Twitter to remove share accounts this week on social media. This that I'm seeing right here, Twitter's going to take that away. For some of us that we manage social media, that's not good. I want to see the value of my efforts. I want to see that I posted this and it was shared 2,000 times. For some reason, Twitter is going to remove it. Actually, I kind of know the reason already. Twitter owns um, a, a website, a, a platform that will help you measure your return on investment, your ROI of tweets. And cynically, I think, well, Twitter removed the free version of it. Maybe they'll add a paid version later. We'll see if that happens. But now we know that there's been this update because we keep up with social media. <clears throat> so on this site, um, of course then it's going to pop up, it's trying to it's trying to complete a conversion goal, the term conversion. Uh, basically, a version of a definition is a goal. A conversion is a goal. You've converted someone from one thing to another. For example, I visited this website. I have not subscribed to their newsletter. 
therefore I have not been converted. If I do sign up for the newsletter, now I'm a conversion. So we can define just about anything to be a conversion. And we often use that term in social media um, as a way to, to define goals. It's a goal for this company to get more subscribers. Again, all of this is in service of some form of marketing, of advertising. In short, all of our advertising and marketing is trying to convince you of something. If you see a billboard on the road every day, maybe one day that billboard will convince you to go eat at that restaurant because it's gotten in your mind. Maybe you're hearing, you're listening to the radio and they play those ads. So then that ad, that radio ad, is convincing you, you need this financial planner because she's good. This, uh, there's a form of marketing going on here by reading the, the free posts and then having this sort of hard sell. They're trying to convince me, this company knows what it's talking about in social media. Let me subscribe. Then I become a conversion. Maybe then ultimately, however, their, their big conversion goal, because you can have many, one of their other conversion goals perhaps, if you notice, it's hard to see here, but there's a conference, there's a summit, there's a part of, a, there's an industry conference that they're affiliated with, and these conferences are usually never free. So maybe an ultimate conversion goal is to also get people to sign up for this social media conference, to pay for the social media conference. So I often, in my classes, use a fictional company called Victor's Bakery. And what would you say is one goal, one conversion that I'm trying to accomplish? Never mind online, just in general. What would you think as a, as a bakery? What do you think I'm trying to accomplish? Any, any opinions? Sell your goods. Sell my goods. Sell my cookies. Sell my baked goods. Anything else? And drive traffic to your store. Drive traffic to my store to do what? Buy cookies. So let's say ultimately the main goal of my bakery is to sell baked goods. That's one of my conversion goals. If I turned a non-cookie eater into a cookie eater, that's a conversion. Along the way though, I'm going to use social media to let people know, sale this Saturday, come to the store, or get followers on, on LinkedIn to use a coupon on the store online or maybe post photos of Instagram for the sake of getting more followers on Instagram for then getting people to click a link to buy a cookie. So marketing, advertising, all in the service of accomplishing a goal of completing a conversion. That's why we're that's how we're going to use social media. Because if I look at social media examiner, they have a quarter of a million followers on Twitter. They have 29,000, nearly 30,000 followers on LinkedIn. Um, almost a quarter of a million followers on Google+. Plus. No statistic on Facebook or Pinterest, but I'm sure we can find it. But anyway, they've got an audience. They've got a captive audience. This is like Bed Bath & Beyond sending that coupon to everyone in San Diego. That's, that's you know, five million people or whatever, three million. And 1%. What's 1% 1 of 3 million? Let's see. What's 1% of 1 million? Uh, 10,000 or something? Lots of people. Even with that 1%, they reached a lot of people. 1% of 30,000. 1% of 230,000. Some amount of those followers of that captive audience are going to complete the conversion goal, whatever it is you're you're, you're striving toward. And it can be many conversion goals, not just ultimately sell a product. That's one of the hardest ones to do, because it's very easy for someone to click like on that photo, but it's even harder for someone to click buy on that product. So I'm curious here. Notice we've got a uh, browse categories, and then we've also got search. Let's see if they mention here anything about LinkedIn. If you start typing linked in on the search box, it'll pop up with a variety of keywords from their site. LinkedIn groups, features, share, strategy, 
recommendation. I'm just going to select the first basic tag here, just LinkedIn. I'm going to search, what does this site have to say about LinkedIn? How to build a LinkedIn marketing plan that delivers ongoing results. Five LinkedIn marketing tips to grow your business. Eight LinkedIn marketing tips from the experts. This is only on social media. Man. That's right. Okay. It's a custom search only on their site. See, it says right here, custom search. You'll also see that the links, the green links, all say social media examiner. So lots of articles on LinkedIn on this site. Does that mean you need to read them all? Because it looks like it says it's got 2,000 of them. <laughs> well, no, you're not going to read them all. But what I would say is, look at the date. 2013 in the world of social media is a long time ago. 2015, that's this year, June. That's not so far away. Perhaps that article is a little more relevant than the one of 2013, because things change. These networks evolve. So January 13, that was a while ago. June 15 wasn't that long ago. Some don't have dates. November 2014, not that long ago, but we're getting to about a year now, aren't we? And in a year, in terms of technology and social media, is longer than a regular year. I'm going to take a quick look. You can look at any one of them, but I'm going to look at one called Eight LinkedIn Marketing Tips from the Experts. That's the one that's from June 11th. You're often going to see the terms interchangeably presented marketing and social media. You might even also see social media marketing. Question? What's this social media examiner? That's just the name of their website. They made up a business and they called it Social Media Examiner. Oh, and that's kind of or, like, No, it could be because this whole world of social media has a job description and title, although there's no consensus. I've heard of them as social media marketers, social media gurus, I've even heard social media ninjas. So I don't doubt that someone has a has a job as social media examiner. I'm going to look at eight LinkedIn marketing tips, June 11th. So there seems to be an audio version of the article as well. Kind of like a free audio book. If you download it and put it on your phone, you can listen to it on the on the commute. Learn valuable info from LinkedIn publisher stats. Invest in LinkedIn sales navigator. Network on the go. Optimize LinkedIn for SEO. Some of this requires uh, purchasing a portion of LinkedIn, correct? Some of it does, yes. Nowadays, I did say that we can use social media for free and it's in the syllabus and all of that, but there is an aspect of social media that you can pay for, not required, but you can pay for extra features on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Usually I avoid those things in my classes just because I want it to be the most cost-effective, but I do touch on things here and there, and I do mention things here and there about possibly uh, paying for, for features and why they might be important. So we'll, we'll come back to this article a little bit later because perhaps we don't have a LinkedIn account yet. We're going to create one and then uh, start using it uh, most effectively. Um, but we're going to take our, our first break, short break.
when we come back we'll actually do it. I just want to get a quick show of hands, however. How many of you have ever created a LinkedIn profile before? Okay. How many of you ha have ever created one? Okay. And how many of you currently have a LinkedIn profile? Okay. If you currently have one, how many of you then have logged in in the last month? Okay. So we have a variety of, uh, of skills and abilities and such. We're going to take our break. When we come back, we're going to create an account. So if you don't have one, we're going to create one. If you do have one, we're going to log in. And then after we've all got an account, then we're going to start to use it effectively. It's about 127. We'll be back at 137. I'm going to turn the printer back on if you'd like to print. And also you want to make sure you are